Let's get into what happened on 60 Minutes on Sunday night because they decided to take a deep dive into the dangers of social media and in particular to any pushback against the beloved fact checkers. Who are these people? I don't know. They're in these like think tanks out in Silicon Valley and they've decided to tell us what's right and what's wrong and we are supposed to listen to them and if we or Elon Musk do not listen to them, we're all doing the wrong thing because somebody died and made them ultimate arbiters of truth. So here's just to set it up, Leslie Stahl talking about how awful social media is um, on Sunday, 12, side 12. Confronted with criticisms and because of cost cutting, platforms began downsizing their fact-checking teams. So today, social media is teeming with misinformation. After Elon Musk took over in 2022, most of its fact checkers were fired. Now the site is rife with trash talk and lies. Little would you know that this, said to be footage from Gaza, is really from a video game. Eventually, ex-users added a warning label. Now the site post Elon is is rife with trash talk. Why does she care about trash talk, first of all? And lies, unlike before Elon, when you could go out there and say, COVID started in a wet market because of animals and the vaccine will prevent the spread of COVID. You could say those things pre-Elon when we weren't allowing the lies on Twitter. It's weird how she doesn't actually go into that. What lies exactly? Like what? Let's get into it. I just the whole notion that there's a group of fact checkers at Twitter or anyplace else who get to tell us what's right and what's wrong. I love what Elon did with the community note. The community notes are now my my favorite part of Twitter. If somebody goes too far afield, they get a community note, people weigh in. It's super fun. You can see how wrong somebody is, but there's not some elite group of like four people, all of whom grew, went to some elitist university and hate the right half of the country, Emily, telling us what's right and wrong anymore. Yes, but that's what's very scary um, because Leslie Stahl has lost her power as a gatekeeper. And so what they have is this pretense. Uh, for some people, it's legitimately, like they really actually believe that uh, the information they disagree with is A, categorically wrong, and then B, dangerous. Uh, For others, it's a political weapon. I think people like Leslie Stahl are are true believers, like they've actually never heard the alternate arguments. And so they're just completely uh, in the dark. Uh, I say that as my light went out, and it's kind of a pun uh, if you're watching this. (laughs) (laughs) Well done. uh, Leslie Leslie Stahl, uh, she's lost her power as the gatekeeper of information. And which, by the way, but it's just stupid, because what people post on social media, they used to talk about at bars, like this is also what's much worse about social media than the disinformation information is that it has us all addicted to screens and phones in ways we used to be talking at bars and on the sidelines of our kids' soccer games or whatever else, sharing plenty of disinformation. Like, I know it was a long time ago, but there are all kinds of people saying completely false things in person, still are, uh, and now we're getting to a place where the Leslie Stahls of the world are going to want to prevent that from happening too. By the way, that same edition of 60 Minutes, they interviewed AMLO, the president of Mexico, who constantly spews disinformation. So should CBS... 60 minutes be censored for interviewing AMLO because he's an agent of disinformation? I mean, they would never apply the same standards to themselves when it's COVID or Russia collusion, any of those things. They just want to use it as a blunt weapon against the people they disagree with. Eliana, take a listen to university uh, professor, she's from University of Washington, Kate Starbird, uh, being questioned by Leslie Stahl about how chilling it is for them to be questioned about their work. Like they they do not want to be chilled in their fact-checking of us. And she's really had enough of it. Watch. Are researchers being chilled? Absolutely. This campaign against you is meant to discredit you. So we won't believe you. Absolutely. It's interesting that the people that pushed Voter fraud lies are some of the same people that are trying to discredit researchers that are trying to understand the problem. Did your research find 
that there was more misinformation spread by conservatives. Absolutely. I think uh, not just our research, <laughs> research across the board looking at the 2020 election mm -hmm. found that there was more misinformation spread by people that were supporters of Donald Trump or conservatives. And the events of January 6th kind of underscore this. It's amazing. Like, I, you know, part of me appreciates 60 Minutes just leaning right into its bias over the past few months. Like, just show it. Let, let it fly. We all know it's there, but, like, normally they try to hide it a bit, Eliana. No, it's, how about the conservatives? They're the worst, aren't they? Yes, they're even worse than you think, says the lady at a central casting from the James Carville quote. She's the one that he's talking about, Eliana. The New York Times had a story about a week ago that was exactly the same as this. The headline was something along the lines of how Donald Trump and his allies are winning the war against disinformation. And nowhere along the line in that piece or in this piece, um, is there any nod to how the fact checkers and the arbiters of misinformation or, you know, whatever these people are, um, have completely discredited themselves by trying to stamp out things that are true, whether it's the New York Post story on Hunter Biden's laptop or uh, the notion that COVID uh, began from a lab leak or any number of other things, these people have utterly discredited themselves. And when she talks about um, people are trying to silence us, um, it is a taste of their own medicine. And the other thing that's galling is none of these people entertain the idea that perhaps misinformation uh, should be allowed. Perhaps people right. should be able to say things that are wrong. Um, and perhaps the American people should be allowed to decide between things that are wrong and things that are right and come to their own conclusions. Um, perhaps this is the way we've existed for a long time without professors of disinformation, you know, at University of Washington helping us along. Uh, it's just so, so true. So ridiculous. Do, the Do you want Carvel that woman point? deciding what you can and cannot yeah. see? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a no. no, no. To the, the James track Carvel record point. is not good. That's mm -hmm. it's funny because actually Barb McQuaid and another host on NPR, Barb McQuaid is like on MSNBC, but she was uh, talking about her new book on NPR last week to James Carville's point about how NPR has these like lecturing women on it constantly talking about how the First Amendment is not absolute. And by the way, these are two people who work in media, one of whom is an actual journalist talking about how the First Amendment is not absolute. You've never had the right to spread disinformation. Real information is dangerous. And people like Matt Taibbi, Michael Schellenberger, Barry Weiss, are just all cranks uh, when they talk. They're just all Trump-addled MAGA cranks when they talk oh about Lord. even the New York Times being censored by the government at one point during the 2020 election. I mean, it's outrageous. It's an outrage to the industry. It's an outrage to journalism. Debt. You can go to bed thinking about it, and you can wake up thinking about it, too. Here's the truth. The system traps you in debt. High interest credit cards and loans make it nearly impossible to pay off your debt. And insane inflation keeps you stuck paycheck to paycheck. Done with debt can be a lifeline for you. Done with debt has an ingenious new strategy to help erase your debt faster and easier than you ever thought possible. Done with debt analyzes all the debt options that you qualify for. They know how to reduce bills. They know how to cut interest rates. And their skilled staff of negotiators know how to get debt out of your life permanently without bankruptcy and without a loan. Done With Debt has experts who can share with you strategies for eliminating debt, but you need to hurry because some debt solutions are time sensitive. Here's how easy they make it. Go to donewithdebt.com. That's donewithdebt.com, donewithdebt.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.